Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Dan. How is you? How is everyone? Good morning. Good morning yourself. Doing wonderful. Doing wonderful. Good morning. How's Phoenix treating you, Nicole? I'm in Tucson this week. Okay. Next week, I'm in Phoenix. The life of a traveler. Yeah. Well, we'll get started here in a little bit. People are popping in. Diego, are you watching any family reunion stuff? Yeah, I went back and watched some of the breakout videos I missed while I went door knocking. But today I'm going to stay in and watch everything. I watched some of the Gary Keller speech in the morning. Good stuff, huh? Yeah. What, Moose? Come here, Moose. Come on, come say hi. Up, up, come on, up, up. He stepped on his sister. Now she's bitchy. Come oh, here, they said no. <gasps> oh, hi, Moose. Mm, say hi, say hi, Moose. That's a big dog. Oh, he's small compared to his sister. <laughs> Can I help you? Thank you. I'll go play. How much does he weigh? He weighs 100 pounds. Oh. I think my dog's going to be 75, so it's not going to be too far. Yeah, he's a beast. Yeah. His his sister's part wolf. Come here, Chicago. Ooh. I'll see if I can get this to pop up. Does she have the colored eyes? Chicago, come here. Oh, that's nice. Aww. Oh, she's huge. What? Oh, that's who's always singing in the background here. That's so funny. Welcome back, Larry. Thank you. How was your your relicensing vacation? Uh, did well. Finished up what I needed to do down there with that as far as licensing goes, follow up on that. But um, it was kind of like the old days down there. I ended up in two conversations that led to two potential deals. That a boy. And then you have the condo sold and another property out in Choya, boathouse, house, nice piece of land type of thing. Complicated stuff, but um, at least it's uh, some stuff that's possible. Possible is good because possible is probable and probable is profitable. That's where we're going. We like it. We like it. Good morning, Jason. Good morning, Paige. Good morning. Guys, we're going to jump right in. Today. today is my favorite day. What is today? Somebody's echoing badly. Do a mute check. Well, everyone's muted now, so it's definitely not me. Is, is it, 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 me, me, me? Yeah, so it's uh, your question again was? You guys know what today is? It's Wednesday. What's awesome about Wednesdays? Pick your number. Pick your number. Did you guys get to watch it? Those of you doing family reunion, did you get to watch the script off yesterday? Yes. I'm not, I'm not, I'm throwing this out there. I mean, only because Robin said so. I'm pretty sure Cody Gibson took some tricks from me. I think he did. It sounded like Big Dan talking. It did. It really did. That was awesome to watch that stuff, but we got a couple more objections. I'm going to go back and watch it again and get the rest because unfortunately, I got a very rude call that happened in the middle of it that kept me from listening to the last part. So, good morning, everyone. Oh, not, not everything was recorded. No. Yeah, everything's recorded. It just takes a while to get the videos uploaded. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. But that being said, I'm going to let... Diego, you get to go first. We're going to give you your first shot at What's Your Number Wednesday. So before we do anything, do you understand the rules? You froze. Oh, wait, my wife. Hold on. He's too far away from his house. Wait, can you hear me now, Dan? We can hear you now. Okay, I'm walking my dog, but so I just pick a number? Pick a number between 1 and 42. Uh, 22. 22, buyer, 
You know, Diego, I, I appreciate that you're willing to look for houses for me and you want me to sign this exclusivity agreement. I just, I'm not ready to just work with one agent. And why is that? Well, I just, I think it's better if I have multiple agents looking for houses for me, you know, a better chance of winning out. Well, I believe the only problem with having multiple agents looking for houses for you is you don't have just one dedicated to you only. Well, yeah, I'll have multiples dedicated to me. Um, ah. Who wants to help I'm out? Of, I'm kind of stuck, Dan. Who wants to help him out? I'd say that the, um, okay, so this is where I'd go with this. Uh, I absolutely hear you. So um, why is it that you don't want to work with just in one agent? Yeah, I, I feel like I, I have a better chance of getting finding a house that I like with multiple agents looking for me. I absolutely understand that. And actually, I had a client who kind of felt the same way. And once we sat down and talked, um, she realized that working with one agent allows her to get very specific about what she's looking for um, or what you're looking for. And then that way, I'm your go-to always. Instead of trying to track down four or five different agents, you're only trying to track down one. Um, so that gives us the opportunity to get to know one another, to allow me to get to know you and what you're looking for, and to build that rapport so you feel comfortable come the time okay. what else is it about that that bothers you that's it awesome okay well i have friday available if you'd like to uh, sit down and take a talk or have a talk we've got 10 a.m and 2 p.m well, i'd love to take a talk with you awesome. take a talk <laughs> <What the heck? laughs> that was good it was good all right i was good sarah since you you got to go next what's your number um let's do 10 Number 10. Number 10 is you are working with a for sale by owner. You had a terrible experience. I had a terrible experience with the last realtor. I'm done with realtors. Oh, I don't blame you. Boy, do I hear this a lot. Um, can you tell me uh, what happened with that real estate agent that uh, left this bad taste in your mouth? Yeah, they were super pushy and they pressured me into signing the contracts. They put a sign in the yard and then I never heard from them again. Uh, I hear this all too regularly. Okay, so I'm not at all the same. Um, I uh, actually, um, you know, <laughs> depending on the situation, I talk to you literally every single day and the sign is there just so people can call me and uh, I'm not going where I want to with this. So I did really good on the last one, but I'm <laughs> um, uh, I know this one too. Somebody help her out. Don't be shy. For sale by owners. Come on, for sale by owner. Done with realtors. I know you guys got something. Who else help her out? Don't be don't be shy. Frank, give it a shot. Uh, not, the only thing I can think of is just saying, you know, um, the the hassle of uh, trying to sell your your property by yourself. You know, just the. Uh, All right. The, yeah, people you know, trying to see their house, people that don't know, you know, who they are. As agents, we work with the pre-qualified buyers and, you know, just it's something that we're working on an appointment versus people just going over there and knocking at their door, you know, at who knows what times of the day. Good, good start. Anyone else got some feedback? You want to, you want you want to add that um, typically when you work with an agent versus working by yourself that you um, are able to sell your house for a percentage higher and, and get more for your house by using an agent. Okay. Well, what's, what's the main fire that we need to f deal with here, guys? Yeah, he, you don't want to deal with, uh, you know, you got left stranded, essentially. So. Yes. I understand the value of an agent. The last agent I worked with left me high and dry, kind of just disappeared. We want to isolate that. Mr. Seller, I completely understand. I love where Sarah was going with this. She's like, wow, you're right. I hear this all the time. It's unfortunate that there's agents out there in our profession that are just giving us a bad look. They're not doing the things that they're supposed to do. They're not following up with their creeds and credence and making sure that they're looking after their fiduciary responsibilities to you. Now, the difference between myself and the other agents you may have dealt with is mm -hmm. I'm a professional. And what does that mean is I'm actually dedicated to look after your best financial interests. And that includes constant communication, making sure we get your house sold in the least amount of time for the most amount of money and the least amount of hassle. 
I can tell that, you know, something was left unsaid or, you know, unsettling when you sold your house last time, you won't have that experience again. Working with me seems like it's a win-win situation. Sign right here and let's get your house sold. God, that was really good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yet the, the, the other piece of that is, and Dan mentioned it in general, but I, I try to be specific and say, you know, one of the things that, you, you know, in working with me is you're going to hear from me twice a week. No questions. I'm going to follow up with people who have either called about it, other agents I've spoken to, feedback I've gotten on the house. I will, you know, basically kind of schedule, you know, not in stone, but I'll have scheduled twice a week calls with you just to update what's what's going on. Any concerns that you may have, you can share with me through the process, but I'm also going to be giving you feedback on what I'm hearing from agents and people who've been in the house. I like it. Okay. Larry, what's your number? Three. Oh, number three, buyer. I like the house, but it's got the ugliest carpet I've ever seen. Well, I can understand that. Everybody has their favorite color in decor in various parts of the house, be it on the wall, be it on the floor, or in this case, in this case, carpet. Um, let's take a shot at, <clears throat> if there, it, it, is that truly the only thing that's kind of, that's holding you back right now? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's, let's take, let's take a, a shot. Lot of work, it's just ugly. Yeah. All right. Well, let's take a shot at uh, negotiating with the uh, seller on this and see if uh, we can possibly get a carpet change to have, you know, be part of the deal. Now, you know, if the carpet, you know, carpet, I admit it is old and, the, and therefore the seller's got to know that it could be a problem. And a seller's agent should have let them know that if they're worth their weight in their profession. So, um, yeah, we can negotiate uh, and, and ask for a carpet exchange as part of our deal. Okay. Is that a hard enough close? So, no, it's not. <laughs> what I miss? Just going. The last thing is go for it. All right. Now that yes. we've got that out of the way, let's get your offer put in and see if we can't get you this house. Thank you. So, okay. Who's next? I like when you guys speak up and I don't have to pick you. So I feel bad about picking people that turn their cameras off randomly. I'll go. Nicole, it is. Ooh, I love it. Coming out of the darkness. All right, Miss Nicole, you're up. Oh, what number? Um, 12. Number 12. Working with a buyer. I want to buy a house. I just don't think my credit's in line. Oh, okay. I, I understand what you're saying, but let's take a look and see if we can get a lender involved. And I have three choices for you, and we can um, get in touch with them and have them check it out to see where you're at first so we can get pre-qualified for you. Okay. Yeah. Okay, then I'll, I'll text you the um, different lenders' information, and then you can go from there with them with the application, and they will help guide you through it. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay, great. One thing I'd add to that, Nicole, is go ahead and call us out there. Sarah, you unmuted. I'll let you go first. I, I just get this an awful lot. So I get a lot of people and I have one lender that I send them to because he's got a whole like a uh, team that helps people with credit. So is there anything else that we can throw into this? That's kind of what I wanted to know. Miss Sarah, I completely understand your concern that your credit may not be in line to buy a house. What makes you say that? Oh, my credit score is, it's just, it's around 600. Okay, around 600. Did you know that there's actually FHA loans out there that you can qualify for as low as a 580 credit score? I did not, know. Yeah, our consumer credit that we look at through Credit Karma or those other free websites may not be the exact same resource that the, the creditors use when they're pulling your credit for a mortgage. Let me get you paired up with my lending professionals that have teams of people in place to help you with your credit challenges if there is one. You may be surprised. You might be able to qualify for home right now, and then you could be on the path to home ownership sooner than later. How's this sound? Let's get started. Awesome. And then there, are there grants for people with low credit too? or or Because I think if I've seen the grants, they start at 620 for a credit score, but I'm not sure. There are grants. We, we covered a little bit of this in our PC call on Tuesday, okay. Monday, actually, with Steve Lewis, okay. where there are some grants, a Pima County grant for closing cost assistance. If they have their down payment and they just don't have the money for closing costs, there are grants in place to make sure you talk to your lending professionals. 
okay. about different programs. And their credit ratings are anywhere from 620 to 680 for those. Okay. That's okay. Like I said, I've had people that are 500 credit scores on Credit Karma be 620 somethings on their, their mortgage credit. So Credit Karma is the Zillow of, it's, it's a credit estimate, a Zestimate. It's a credit, a Crestimate. All right, Paige, you're up. What's your number? Between one and 40. Two. Um, two? One and 42. Oh, I thought you were picking for me. Um, let's do 10. Do we already do 10? 10 is done. Uh, 11. Ooh, 11. Seller. You know what, Paige, I'll, I'll, lift my, I'll list with my house with you, but ABC Brokerage said that they'll do it for 4%. Will you match that? Okay, so I definitely hear you, Dan. Um, the only thing with that is, you know, if if we're advertising at four percent, what what house do you think the agents are going to bring their clients to? The one that's offering four percent or the one that's offering six percent? So if you offer the standard six percent, you're going to have more traffic, and we're going to get your house sold for the most amount of money in the least amount of time. Okay. So do you want to go ahead and list that 6%? <laughs> yeah, don't forget to go for the clothes on stuff because it could just be a smoke screen, right? You want to add something to that, anyone? Not also just yeah, I was. I didn't hear the whole thing, but it sounded like she asked you a question and was pausing, and then you pushed her forward to it. Um, is that not the spot that she should be waiting for you to respond back to it? It's, it wasn't a hard ask. It was just kind of a, a light throw out there. But you want something that's going to incite a response from the seller. Miss Page, I completely understand that they'll do it for 4%. Now, as I know, and you know, that discount brokerages are out there because people want to save money. And in saving money, what do you expense? You, you lose out on marketing exposure and possibly getting the top dollar for your house. What's more important to you? How much you pay in fees or how much do you net overall? So if I can show you a way that my firm can help you make more money and take more money into the next chapter of your life, wouldn't it make sense to work with us? Great. It sounds like working together is a win-win situation. Sign right here. Let me get your house sold for you. See how you can isolate it and move on. All right, Jason, what's your number? uh 17 17 you're working you know this is perfect for you jason you know i i appreciate you man i thank you for calling me i just want to work with an agent with a little bit more experience sounds like uh do you want to work uh, no i don't want to go there um what about that uh makes you say what makes you say that well, I just, I feel like in this market, I need an agent that's got a little bit more experience to help us, you know, win deals. I kind of get what you're saying. Um, I will admit I am definitely a new agent. However, the team that I have behind me, there is a ton of experience. And uh, since I am new, uh, no, I don't want to go there either. Uh, just that my, uh, my team that is working with me behind me, we have a ton of experience and that also being a new agent uh you're going to have my undivided attention unlike other people who have teams or are super busy that you're not going to get the attention that you need okay it sounds like that um it's going to work best uh, it sounds like it's going to be a win-win for us uh, and we should work, work together. Here, sign this. <laughs> yeah, you got, you got to see how see how easy it is just to, for just to have a conversation, let the conversation trail off, and not push it forward. You got to push it forward. So it's as simple as that. You know, it sounds like working together would be a win-win situation. Sign here. Press hard. Fourth copy is yours. Right, Miss Mara. That really confused me, by the way. And every time I kept hearing, like Matt would say, "Press here, press hard, three copies, or whatever," 
And then when I went to my first, I was like, where's all these copies? Oh no, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke about the old day and carbon copies were paper. When we signed contracts, they were signed in paper and they were carbon paper. So there was up to nine or 10 different pages. And when you pressed hard, the carbon pushed through and it made copies. Yellow copies, yours, pink copies of banks, white copy goes to the broker, so. So. Mara. Am I pick, uh, I'll I'll pick, Mara. Oh, are you picking somebody or am I? Sitting, Mara already. Oh, okay. um, 16. Number 16, seller. So there's just not that many listings right now, Mara, especially not in my neighborhood. We're just gonna sell it on our own. Okay, well, I, I appreciate uh, you wanting to do that. Um, I Can you tell me a little bit more about why you'd want to do that? Well, I mean, the inventory is super light right now, so why would I want to spend 6% on a realtor when I could just save that money and sell it myself? And okay. put a sign up, put it on Zillow, and there's I'm bound to get offers. Right. So what I'm hearing is you do want to get the most money for your house, right? Because the market's hot? Yes. Okay. Well, uh, statistically, uh, we see that uh, for sale by owner um, actually doesn't usually get the most money for their house. Um, when working with an agent, you typically get about 15% more. Um, so if my commission is only 6% uh, that I'm sharing with the other agent, uh, then I can still net you more money. So if I could show you how that is to be true, do you think you would consider working with me? Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Let's get this signed. <laughs> I mean that 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 quest would you consider working with me is a close it's it's a it's a next step conversation I saw how Cody gives me I he always isolates the objection you know other than blank other than we talked about that a couple days ago I know you've been working on that with us too so I finally used it yesterday yeah I talk about that. that I did a listing presentation to this weekend and they had uh, Zillow offers out and so they were gonna do their thing. And I said, well, I don't know, you know how much you know about you know, these I buyers, but I know they you know, say they don't charge a commission, but there's lots of fees. And, um, and when you need to get something fixed, they still make you pay for those repairs. And sometimes you don't know what those are gonna be. And his eyes got really big. <laughs> um, so I went through my spiel, but I knew I wanted to wait and see what they said. I'm like, I don't see how they could really compete with you know, retail you know, market value right now. So yesterday I finally said, because he's still waiting on their bid. And I said, so other than waiting for Zillow's bid, is there any reason you wouldn't, you, you guys wouldn't want to decide to work with me? He goes, well, I think we pretty much decided to work with you. We're already working on these repairs. Um, so anyway, I just thought it was kind of fun to at least try it out on, on somebody because I'm not comfortable, you know, right off the cuff saying that right now. But well, that's, it's, it's one of those like, it's almost like an exercise when it's new to you, you feel weird doing it. It's kind of sore and achy, but then you get used to it. And you feel stronger. That is one of the best things to do is isolate and overcome. So other than blank, what's keeping you from blank. So, and you can almost use that on any objection we've had other than needing an agent with more experience. Is there anything that's keeping you from working with me? Other than the other company offering you 4%, is there anything that's keeping you from signing this listing right now? Right. What else do we have? Uh, other than the ugly carpet, is there anything that's keeping you from buying this house? I mean, Larry kind of said that in, in so many words, but that's the thing is other than, because you're isolating that one thing, that way you're not overcoming multiple objections. We call it a moving target. You know, it's where they're like, you know, the, the price is too much. It's got the ugly green carpet and, you know, I hate the neighborhood. Well, other than those three things, is there anything keeping you from moving forward on the purchase of this house? No. Okay, great. We can get the carpet replaced. We can get you a lower sales price and they're going to re be remodeling the entire neighborhood. Well, uh, we hate the drive to the to work. Oh, so there is something else. Because when you overcome those objections and then another one's up, it's called a moving target because you're constantly fighting a moving target. So when you're able to isolate, then boom, you can overcome that one objection and move on. Right, Ms. Robin? Isolate the objection and move on. Sorry, right. my attention was divided. I know. What's your number? We're going to get you onto them. Okay. Number nine. Number nine. We're just going to sell our house with open door. I understand that um, open door is certainly an option um, that's advertising a lot and 
making themselves known in this market. Just tell me why that appeals to you. Oh, I just, I, I need to sell it fast. We need to sell it fast and the convenience of selling it quickly is there and they'll just buy it and I don't have to do any repairs or anything. It's going to be nice. Oh, certainly. I understand that. That's, you know, time is money and you want to get this house sold. Um, but you also want to net the most amount of money. Isn't that true? I do. Yes. So truly by working with an agent like myself um, and going on the market, you're going to be able to net a lot more money than open doors going to pay you um, a much lower amount than what you're going to get when, especially in the seller's market where there's a lot of competition for buyers. Um, I think you're going to find that we're going to be able to sell your home very quickly in a short amount of time and net you the most amount of money. And that's what you'd like to accomplish. Isn't that true? Absolutely then it sounds like we should really work together and get your house sold. Um, oh, I didn't do that right. It's okay, try again. So it sounds like working together would be a win-win situation. Wouldn't you like to have me get, wouldn't you like to have me um, help you get this house sold in the shortest amount of time and net you the most amount of money? Sounds perfect to me. Excellent. Well, let's just get this paperwork signed. We'll get this house on the market and get it sold for you. There you go. But like we discussed, Robin, it's, it's perfectly natural to trip on your words in this call because it's more stressful to script on this call than it is actually in the wild. Did you guys know that? It is more stressful for you guys to script in front of me and, and your peers than it is to actually do this in front of your clients. So if you're good in front of your peers and your, and your, your mentors, your clients will be easy because your brain is tricking you by going, they know what I'm supposed to say. I better not screw up. And then your brain makes you screw up. So don't beat yourselves up. I think you did great. I love that you caught yourself. You're like, oh, I didn't say that right. So your brain is clicking along. Fantastic there. <sighs> On the open door, Redfin, I buyers of any type, guys. Remember what they are. No. What are I buyers? They don't care about you. Discount investors. brokerages. They're yep. investors. What do investors want? To save Lower money. Sales. They want to make money off you. They're going to make money off the sale of the property they just purchased. So you can easily peel somebody off an iBuyer, especially in this market, being the multiple sales and stuff like that. We take care of the heavy lifting. All you got to do is say yes. So remember what an eye buyer is. It's very easy for you as a human being to beat up a computer being. Just saying. All right, who's next? Got a minute for like two more. Hmm, Robin Bender, let's give it a shot. What's your number between one and 42? Uh, eight. Number eight. So Robin, you're the expert. You tell me what we're gonna list the house for. Well, according to the comps that I have here, your price should be at two forty nine nine. Oh, uh, that seems too low, way too low. I understand, but if we want to get this sold in a timely manner, we need to price it at two forty nine nine because the surrounding homes are actually right in that price range between two thirty five and two forty. No. 242 and 250. Okay. So if we price it at 249.9, people are going to look at that and go, oh, it's less than this $250,000 home. Gotcha. Plus, I'm pretty sure when we have that, that inspection happen, this is the price that it's going to come in at. And that way we don't have to mess with lower pricing or overpricing or any of that kind of stuff. Does that sound good to you? Sounds good to me. Are we allowed to tell them what to, or, or do, we're, I just thought we were, I was under the impression we just suggested. Yeah, we are, we, good question. And we can probably end on that topic. 
is that we do not tell them what to sell their house for, what the price is. We advise them on the information of the market. When somebody says, you're the expert, you tell me what is acceptable. Based on the information I've gathered on the sale of homes in your area, don't use the word comps. The information oh, oh. I've gathered on the sale of homes in your area that are similar to yours, it averages the price around $249,000. Now, there's three options when we price a house. We can price it above market, which is what you're asking for, and we can hope that we get that one needle in a haystack buyer that wants to pay more and comes in with cash, and the appraisal doesn't matter. We can price it at market where we're going to get about 30 to 40% of the people that are looking in this price range. It'll come check it out knowing it's, it's a valued deal. Or we can price it slightly below market and create a feeding frenzy where we might potentially have a bidding more that'll drive the price above market. Which choice would you like to use? Mm, so good. It's, it's the option base, not, well, I think we should sell for 250 because they can come back and say, well, he said he could sell for 250. I think she wants to fuck the shit out of Dan. Jason, you're unmuted and talking. Do you want to go again? No. <laughs> so, Dan, I do have a question for you. Um, that that three-step process um, really applies, obviously, to the fast-moving stuff, your 250 $300, $400,000 range price. I'm, I'm in a um, putting together a, a listing proposal for a $1 million home. Yeah. And so is, how would you massage that to make it make a little more sense at such a high number? Are you trying to do the listing at 1 million? Is it that the, the dollar tax? The, the, well, there, it's just, it, you know, it's, there's, there's a bit of a range in the, it could be 950, it could be a million, five, a million 500,000 or not, wow. not one five. A million fifty. So a hundred thousand dollars spread between nine fifty and yeah, even that maybe even a little broader based on on information I'm seeing on the CNA, um, on what RPR is saying, on you know what a couple of the other est pricing estimates uh, computer models have. The same conversation plays there, Larry. Larry, I understand that your house is worth a million dollars. Here's the here's the pricing strategy based on the information I've looked up in the neighborhood and the house that's sold around here that's similar to yours. And you can show them this house, this house, this house, especially when you work in high-end high luxury, they want a proof. They want to show which house, the house on Eagle Ridge, the house on Diamondback Trail, and the house on Coast Court, all sold for a million. They're slightly larger than yours. Yours has a better view. So I think that we can justify a higher value. There's three ways that we can price your house and go into the same thing. One, we can price it above the market, you know, generating that one interested buyer that really wants to live in this neighborhood that doesn't care about the appraisal is going to come in with a cash offer anyways, the needle in the haystack, we can price it at the market with the rest of the houses around here, knowing that the market's moving in any direction. We may only get 30 to 40 people that are looking at this house, 30 or 40 percent of people looking at this house where they're, they're going to be interested in it because it's at the market price, or we can price it just below market and create a feeding frenzy where we're going to get a lot more eyeballs on the house. We're going to generate a lot more interest and possibly raise that price up well above our market list and get you as top dollar for your house. Which option would you like to go with? When I say pricing it just below market, I'm talking if your house list is, lists a million, one hundred, a million, fifty dollars, fifty thousand, a million, one zero 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 five zero zero, right? I would list it at nine ninety nine nine just below it's a hundred it's what 150 dollars less or what sixty thousand less i don't know my math is off in my head there's too many decimal points but just barely off you're underneath that million threshold what kind of traffic are you going to get you got people looking for houses up to a million dollars and see this house and like oh we can get this house going 950 let's put in an offer for 10 a million 100 Let's make sure we get it. And then someone that's looking for that million dollar range might go down a little bit and go, okay, well, we want to be in the millions of maybe 900 to 100 or 1.3, 1.4. And they see it like, this is a steal. I love this house. It's got a lot of good bones. We can do the upgrades on it. Let's go into a 1.1. It creates just a conversation where you can hopefully create interest beyond this, the shopper going, the market in this area is a million. Right now, it doesn't matter what price range you're at you got multiple interested buyers. There is no such thing as the market price right now because that's the starting point. 
I haven't seen a single contract come across my desk. My dog is really needing attention right now. I don't know what's going on. Across my desk that wasn't above list price. Can I help you? I put him, I put him on a live Facebook video once and now he's, he's a star. Thank you. Can you go, can, can I finish working now? Thank you. So thank you so much guys for hanging out on us today, this Wednesday, which what's your number Wednesdays, the game show. You didn't know there's a game show. You're out here learning the awesomeness that makes you better at your craft. For those of you joining in on family, you can jump in there, learn some stuff. We'd love to hear from you. Other than that, I'll see you tomorrow. If you got questions and answers here at 845, so we'll see you. Say bye, Moose. Bye, Moose. Mm.